Hey everyone, welcome to another review. Welcome, welcome to my review for the movie The Whale. The Whale stars Brendan Fraser and Sadie Sink, and the movie is directed by Darren Aronofsky. This is the guy who's given us movies like Noah, The Wrestler, Black Swan, Requiem for a Dream, all that kind of crazy shit. What was that fucking one? The Fountain? Ugh. <laughs> um, needless to say, um, I'm not always the biggest Darren Aronofsky fan. Just gonna just throw that out there. I respect him. He's kind of like David Lynch. Like, David Lynch is not a guy, like, I, like, I respect David Lynch a lot. But I'm not, like, a huge fan of his movies. But I, I, I respect his work, though. Uh, Same with like Darren Aronofsky. Actually, probably more of David Lynch. But Darren, Darren Aronofsky, he does bold choices. But I just... There's a lot of his movies I just I can't get into. Oh, like Mother, ugh, couldn't stand it. Uh, Noah and the Fountain. I thought Record for the Dream was just too much out there. Black Swan was okay, but I, just, I never wanted to ever watch that again. Didn't he also do Pie? Just like ugh. the only movie I've ever really loved of his is The Wrestler. The reason I love The Wrestler so much is because it's just a character study about this wrestler and his life and how he made all these very poor decisions. He's trying to right the wrongs he did, trying to build his relationship with his daughter, but also going to the realism of the wrestling underground and stuff, but also him just trying to survive in his everyday life in his trailer park and stuff. There's just such a, such a great grounded story. It's a character study about... Randy the Ram Jackson, played beautifully by Mickey Rourke. I, that is easily Darren Aronofsky's best film to me. And it's not like a weird, out there kind of film. It's a simple, dramatic story about this wrestler. And that, I always thought that was his best film. And I'm like, why doesn't he just do more movies like that? And there we go. I feel like he listened to me. <laughs> the Whale is like that. It is a character study in a dramatic story and it doesn't have to go weird and crazy like his other films that sure are ambitious but they're just very weird and kind of stupid and i have no idea what he's trying to say and they're just they're not very memorable in the right ways i don't know just again i i could be wrong because i know there's a lot of people who love darren aronofsky's work not my thing except the wrestler and now this the whale this is one of his best films. Easily, probably my second favorite. I'll have to watch it more times, but loved this movie. Thought it was fantastic. I'm going to address a few things with this movie that some of the controversies, but I'm just going to talk about the movie itself. It's a very simple story. It's about an obese uh, English teacher, and it's about him trying to reconnect with his daughter. The movie is a lot about the struggles of obesity and trying to overcome them and the pressures and the, you know, the crazy stuff you go through with people and the harassment, but also the self-deprecation you do and the damage you do and the effect it has on you, your health, and of course, the people around you. Uh, tackles a lot of great issues. I think the writing... Was it Samuel D. Hunter wrote the screenplay? Beautiful screenplay. Really, really excellent. Uh, the direction, very subtle. Darren Aronofsky is not always the most subtle director, but very subtle. And it's very well executed, this movie, and it's beautifully done. Brendan Fraser is remarkable in this movie. Absolutely remarkable. He deserves an Oscar win for this role. He literally got into this mindset of this character and what all obese people do and feel like. The emotionality and the toll. Like, Yes, he's in a fat suit, but it doesn't even feel like it. He becomes this character, and you really feel bad for him. You There's, there's times you kind of get annoyed with him because... Again, he's doing it to himself, but Brendan Fraser brings so much humanity and just emotionality to the role that you just can't but sympathize with him as well. And Brendan Fraser does 
do so well with this character that he shows the unlikability, but also the very likability in the heart of this character. And Brendan Fraser is amazing. One of the, easily his best performance in his entire career. And I can't praise this performance enough. Uh, Sadie Sank is also really solid. Uh, Hung Chow is also really good. Uh, what's his name? Ty Simpkins. All very good. Every performance is good, but Brendan Fraser is the top notch performer here. Incredible in this film. Absolutely incredible. Very good message in this film. People are not going to like it, people are going to misread it. But that's their fucking problem. I think the message is very solid, and people need to watch this movie. It is a movie everybody should watch, and I will even say it's a movie that should be shown in schools to educate people on health and destruction people can do to their bodies and what it could do to your mental state and to the people and the loved ones around you. This is an educational movie. It's an important film, and I think... It's a film that will be remembered. It might have controversy, but in the future, people will respect this movie. And I think it's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Are there flaws? Sure. There's a couple scenes that drag a little bit. Darren Aronofsky always has his boring moments in his movies. There's a few in this. Quite a few. And some people, again, if you're not into these kind of like, you know, deep character studies with a lot of slow scenes, people might find this just a drag movie. People might find it just too depressing and just like, why the fuck am I supposed to care? Fair enough, but me, I was fully into this movie. Absolutely loved it. Loved it. And I'm just going to give it my uh, rating before I get into all the other stuff, but on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give The Whale a 9.2 out of 10. Solid, one of the best of the year. All right, let's get to it. This movie has controversy over being... Uh, a fat phobic movie. It has a lot of fat phobia. Uh, every negative review you see on Rotten Tomatoes talks about how the movie is fat phobic and insulting to overweight people and saying that people choose lifestyle because they want to or because they have to or something. And being overweight should not be this depressing and this destructive. And it's painting obesity in a negative light. I highly, highly disagree with that. I think it's, this is obviously a very extreme case of obesity. And when you have this really extreme case, it is very damaging to your mental health. It's very damaging to your physical health. And it damages all the loved ones around you. This movie is so real, very bleak about it. And people, no matter, even if it's a touchy subject and people don't agree with it, it doesn't matter if you agree with it or not. It's facts. Every medical profession will tell you obesity is a killer. It's bad for the heart. It's bad for the kidney. It's bad for the liver. It's bad for everything about you and your health and your mental state as well. And I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna talk about a personal story. This man right here. His name is Stephen Vaders. He passed away August fifteenth, two thousand and fourteen. He was my father. And he passed away because he was overweight. And I'm not trying to insult his weight or anything like that. I loved my father. I miss my father every day. But it was because he was overweight. He didn't take care of himself. We tried, but we couldn't force him. He ate a lot of unhealthy foods. He didn't want to exercise. He didn't want to get the protein in. He just he didn't want to do that. And he died at the age of 50. Doctors said he was having worse and worse health problems in the last couple of years. But the doctor said it could easily be fixed by losing weight. But he never took it seriously. He had a heart attack because of his weight. And they needed to do open heart surgery on him to save his life. But because he was so overweight... If they opened his heart up, he would have died instantly on the table. Because of his weight and because there's so much fat tissue, they couldn't have done the surgery because it would have killed him. So, because of that, they had to basically drug him up so he wouldn't feel pain, and he died slowly a week later in hospital bed. 
So basically, we either had to say he dies on the operating table, or we keep him comfortable for a week and he dies in his sleep. We chose comfortable for a week. We didn't want him to pass away with open heart all up in there and blood and everything. You know what I mean. But all of that could have been saved. If he was even just 60 pounds underweight than he was. So this is why this movie speaks to me and hits me in emotions that I understand. The daughter in this movie, I understand the pain she's going through. Even him, uh, Brandon Fraser's character, uh, was named uh, Charlie. Um, I understood. Like, the toll of his body weight, because my dad told me every day. But the movie doesn't paint this in a positive light. It's not a positive light. This is not a good thing. And my father was a great example of that causes a lot of issues and it affects a lot of people and the thing that people are the fact that people are calling this movie like a fat phobic movie and don't talk about like obesity in such a negative light you have to sometimes to get people to see the real picture that obesity can kill you it can cause a lot of distress to you and the people around you like, the people around you don't want to see you die. That's what happened to my father. And this character, in some ways, not all always, I think my, my dad was probably a little more likable, but my I saw my father when I saw this movie. And it brought a lot of emotions to me. I thought I'd share that with you guys. So, yeah, please let me know what you think of this movie. Join the dark side.